Okay, this is uh, try number three uh, at this video. We've had some issues, and so we're going to try this for a third time, and we'll see if we can get this done. Okay, so these are the examples how to work the math problems. Um, these you three that I have here, you will actually recognize these. These come straight out of the assignment that I assigned for you. Um, and so you should, like, like I said, these should be pretty straightforward for you. These are pretty straightforward. I am going to also do an honors example after I do these three that are, like I said, are pretty straightforward. I'm going to go pretty quick um, because my time limit here is um, 15 minutes. I can't go over 15 minutes, so I'm going to have to go pretty quick to get all these problems done. All right, so over here, first thing is the things I typically grade. So these are the things I would typically grade. Um, that means that usually... You know, um, we're uh, doing something here where I can actually see your work and things like that. Not doing it online. Um, doing it online, I'm not going to be able to see that you write the equation and you show your work. So really, the reason that's there is to understand that in physics, that's what you're going to have to do when you take me in physics. Okay? Okay. And in physics, the problems are longer. These are very simple, very basic. In physics, they're not that way. They're longer. They're multiple steps. There's lots of algebra. So this good problem-solving skill is something you're going to need. Also, you're going to need this skill in chemistry as well. And I taught chemistry for eight, for four or five years before I taught physics. So, you know, same thing. All right, so the equation we're talking about here is S equals D over T. All right? Um, this is just the speed equation that we used the other day. So let's get right into it. Let's start with example number one. So a jogger runs 48.0 meters in 12.0 seconds. What is the speed of the jogger? All right. So you can recognize right away that there is a distance here and then that this is the, is the time. Okay. So we're going to start by writing our equation S equals D over T. And if you do this, this becomes very easy because now all we need to do to show your work, so this is the show your work portion, to show your work, all you need to do is put those numbers into the equation. So it would be 48 meters divided by 12 seconds, okay? So we're just plugging in. Showing your work is nothing more than showing whoever's grading it what numbers you used and what math you did. 48 divided by 12, that's your work. That's what I need to see what numbers you punched into your calculator. All right, so 48 divided by 12 is 4. All right, the units, if you do it this way, the units part of this becomes really easy because if you have your units in with your work, the units just become what they are in the work and you're done. Okay, and there would be your answer for number one. Now, for number two, there are two ways to do this. There is, um, and I'm going to show you two ways. I'm going to show you the first way here would be to use the same equation. So S equals D over T. And you notice this time, though, an athlete runs at 12.2 meters per second. That's a speed for 8.2 seconds. That's a time. What's the length of the race? So this time we are solving for D. So now what we would do is we put the 12.2 in for S. So 12.2 meters per second equals the distance D over the time, which is 8.2 seconds. Now we could just use algebra and solve for D. And if you don't like solve using algebra and solving for D, we could always just make that something you're more accustomed to, like something you use in math. And we can just call that X if you want to solve for X. All right. Now that's one way to do it. And that's totally fine. If you want to do it that way, I'm not going to recommend that you do it that way. The way I'm going to recommend you do it is that you rearrange the equation before you do this and it actually becomes simpler. So if they're asking for a distance, then you need a distance to solve for in your equation. So if we take this equation, S equals D over T, and we isolate the distance, so we're gonna multiply both sides by T, multiply both sides by T, by T, whoop, the t's cancel on that side, we end up with d is equal to s times t. So if we write that out now, s times t, this becomes so much easier because now I have a sp speed, we have an equation that just solves for it, the algebra is done, 
and that's meters per second, times the time, which is 8.2 seconds. The seconds will cancel because this is on top of a fraction and this is underneath a fraction, so they'll cancel. 12.2 times 8.2. Uh, your calculator will spit out 100.04. The units that are left alive are meters, so meters will probably just end up rounding that to 100 meters. Okay, so 100 meters would be your answer. All right, now we do example number seven. Again, we can do it the first way I showed you how to do example number four. We can start with S equals D over T. All right, and then just plug in what we know. So we know that it's traveling at 36 meters per second for 500 meters. So we would 36 meters per second equals 500 meters divided by, and if we don't want to call it we could call it T, or if you just want to call it X and solve for X, that's fine. Run it through the algebra, and you got to solve for X, okay? Again, that's fine. Um, I'm totally okay with that. Uh, the, the, it's not the way I would do it. The way I do it is I would rearrange the equation first. So I'm going to show you that way. To rearrange the equation, now we need to solve for time, okay? So we need to isolate time. So if we rearrange the equation to this point to get time... We would just divide each side by S, divide by S, and there we have it. T is equal to distance divided by S, which makes this really easy now because now we know the distance, which is 500 meters. The speed, which is 36 meters per second. We kill the meters and we end up with uh, 500 divided by 36 and my seconds are left alive. now. On your calculator, this will spit out to be 13.8888889 or 13.8 repeating. You are not allowed to write that. That is not going to be a correct answer. Okay? You learned at the beginning of this class that every measurement tool has a certainty and an uncertainty. Okay? Um, we can't write unlimited digits down or significant figures. So we're going to round this and we're going to round it to 13.9. So always just round it and for our purposes here doing this online, typically I think I have you round most everything to one decimal place, and we'll just call that good. All right, so those are the three typical examples. That's what you're going to be quizzed over um, online and all that stuff. I want to do an honors example. So what would honors look like? Well, honors, an honors problem would look something like this. Oop, let's see if I can move that into a better spot. There we go. So a blue car is 10 meters ahead of a red car. The blue car travels at 10 meters per second. The red car travels at 14 meters per second. When and where does the red car pass the blue car? All right, so when you get into something like this, this is called a simultaneous equations problem. It's called simultaneous equations because you have two objects moving simultaneously. So you have to write an equation for each of them. So what I recommend here is you, uh, draw a sketch first. So we're going to start by sketching for the blue car. Now the blue car is going to travel that far. We're going to call that distance D and it's going to do it at 10 meters per second. There's my sketch. All right, very simple. The red car starts 10 meters behind. So it's going to start back here. It's going to go to the same end point and it's going to travel at 14 meters per second. It's distance is going to be because it has to go 10 it starts 10 meters behind it's got to go 10 meters further so this is going to be d plus 10 okay now now we're ready to start writing an equation so what i recommend you do is you draw a line down the middle of your page label one side blue label one side red helps keep you a little bit organized here okay now what we're going to want to do is because we want to look for what they share what they have in common and it is this distance D. They each have the distance there. Now, I realize the red car goes 10 meters further. We'll deal with that. So what we want to solve for is the distance. So the blue car, we know from up above that the equation for distance is S times T. Okay? Since the blue car is going 10 meters per second, I'm going to go ahead and plug that in, that D is equal to 10 times T. I'm not going to use units here because the units get a little messy. Um... And so that's why I'm not plugging in the units, okay? So you'll have to forgive me. On the red side, 
the distance would be s times t, but its distance is d plus 10 equals s times t. And so if I plug in for that, it's d plus 10 equals 14t. And then I want to solve for the distance, so I'm going to subtract 10 and I'm going to subtract 10. And so d is equal to 14t minus 10. Okay. Now, I've written the solve for d for both cars. And what you notice is I have an equation for d and I have an equation for d. Well, those two things are the exact same thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set them equal to each other. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 10t and I'm going to set that equal to 14t minus 10. Now I just need to solve for t. You know how to do this. We're going to add t, 10 to that side, and we're going to add 10 over here. We're going to subtract 10t. We're going to subtract 10t. And I'm going to end up with 10 is equal to 4t. Run that through the calculator. 10 equal, or t equals 2.5 seconds. Okay. Now we're not done. We're not done. Um, we know that d is equal to 10t. All right. So we need to find d too. So if d is equal to 10t, and I know that t is 2.5, 10 times 2.5 equals 25 meters. Okay. 